Man, there's a word for something like this. Potential game changer. No, that's two words. <laughs> Maybe I should have just called it game changer, not potential game changer. Anyway, hi, I'm Josh the RV Nerd. I'm a bit of a dingbat. Welcome to my hometown uh, Coldwater, Michigan store here at Bish's RV. Behind us, obviously, I'm a little excited because I'm getting all tripped over myself here. The 25 MBH Jayco Whitehawk. This is a brand new floor plan. It's the newest entry into the Whitehawk layout. And the thing is, I, the reason I call this a potential game changer is because I feel like it could work just as well for a camping couple as it could a camping family. Like, obviously, yes, it has the bunk space. You've got a Murphy bed up front. We could sleep uh, four to six in this very easy, uh, uh, very comfortably. Six would definitely have to be some smaller kids, though. Uh, you know, two adults, two kids, certainly all day, every day, very comfortably. But with the, the, the kind of interesting version of a super slide they put in this and the cargo bunkhouse space, I think this could also work just as well for a camping couple who wants to repurpose the bunks when the kids aren't with them for something like, you know, loading up a kayak or, or e-bikes or dog kennels or anything like that. The bunks in this can very easily be repurposed into being something other than just sleeping space, which is uh, a thing that not a lot of bunkhouses can necessarily do. Now, it's 6,400 pounds and, and change. It's a little bit bigger than any other bunkhouse Murphy bed floor plan I've ever seen out there, but I think it brings with it so many good features that it it it, it still qualifies as a, uh, a a viable opportunity here. So it has a, a pretty solid camp kitchen. We've got, of course, that cargo bunk door. We've got Jayco's two plus three year warranty that no one's matching. Goodyear tires on wide stance axles to give it some good ride and handling. And all White Hawks now, as of about the 21 camping season, um, they are all zero to 100 degree tested. So if you're looking to do something that's a little hotter or a little colder. She's going to hold up pretty darn well. Let me know what you think about this one. And if you appreciate the fair way we showcase things, make sure you hit that subscribe button as we go. Now, I'm a pretty happy camper. Anytime I get to say the phrase, I've never seen something quite like this before. Because I see the same things all day, every day. So anytime I get a chance to see something new, originality wins points with me. Even if it doesn't necessarily like make sense. I just like seeing something different for a change. Now we're looking at the modern farmhouse decor today. You can also get something more in like uh, a taupe scale as opposed to like the, the white with the distressed accents called uh, vintage instead of farmhouse. So there are two different options here, which a lot of manufacturers don't give you. This also has deceptively good campsite window coverage, especially when you're sitting down at the seating. Although I, my, my goal in these videos is always to be fair. One of the things here is you can actually manage to cover, for the most part, a couple of those windows with some outside baggage doors. But when we get outside and I open all that up, I think you'll see that you're probably not having that stuff open and leaving it open all the time. So for the most part, the window coverage in here is not too shabby. Now, at a glance, the entertainment center looks like it sucks. Hang with me a little bit here. I'm going to get you a better look at that so you can kind of, you can see it from a different angle because sometimes perspective is really a wonderful thing. Now over here, they've gone with uh, what I'm kind of adopting as nerdism number 37, the Franken table, where it's kind of a booth, kind of a table and chairs, but this right here is one of the things that makes me feel like this RV could work as well for couples as it could families. Because if you want to pull that bench out of there, you suddenly create just a, 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 a couple's like table and chairs arrangement. You might notice it had an extension leaf. It has an easy flip top. I call it uh, like do it all dinette kind of thing where it can become a desk. It can become a little bit of anything you want. But it can also become a footrest in front of that kind of cinema style sofa, which, by the way, has its own table. So if we are inside on a rainy day and we can't use the picnic table outside, you can still seat like six people in here very easily and very comfortably so that we can all kind of eat together in the same space at the same time, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the, uh, behind the, uh, the hanging wardrobe tower closet things, I just couldn't get a really good camera angle on it. There are little hidden pockets back there. It's not going to be CPAP capable, but I think it'd be a neat little phone shelf. You know, there's some extra things like that that you can do with it. I love that they included a, uh, a curtain on that radius roof for us so we can maintain some privacy. That, by the way, is a short queen bed. That is a 60 by 74 camp queen, which I know is uh, a bit of a challenge point for a lot of people. Um, but I, I, again, I like to be fair. I like to point that stuff out so that you know exactly what you're getting into with this one. 
But that same bendy bed style bed that we're looking at right here is also what allows them to really maximize the storage, not just on the inside like we saw, but also uh, in the exterior of the RV. Now flipping a 180 right here, uh, looking from the front to the back basically, this has a, uh, a quality I think a lot of people are going to like. This has a completely ventless floor, and this is something I really prefer. I love it when the slide floor matches the main floor. It just looks a little cleaner, it looks a little more seamless, and to me, it makes the RV look and feel a little bit larger. That's something that I really go for. Um, now, they didn't have a traditional booth dinette to which they could affix power outlets. I do like, though, that they still gave us some power around the dining area with the household and USB plugs over here. Everybody loves them plugs for the United States bees. <laughs> now, uh, you have two different refrigerator choices. Right here, what we're looking at is the 12-volt DC compressor fridge. And the face plates on that, you might notice, will always match the decor that the RV is uh, outfitted with. Another cool thing uh, about those refrigerators is you can also um, uh, change the face place to maybe if you want stainless or something like that. Like you're not stuck with just what comes in here. Those are easily exchanged. That's one of the cool benefits of the Furion refrigerator. Um, over here, if you uh, choose, you can actually get this from the factory with a, uh, a solar package up on the roof and a 30 amp charge controller over here. But by default, there is still a roof solar prep plug and you can always just tap right into that and uh, pop a charge controller in there. I do believe, though, you still need to run a battery down to the, uh, or, nope. <laughs> yeah, you got to run a battery to the wiring backwards. You've got to run a, a wiring down to the battery on that, just to kind of give you an idea. But the living space on this is great, right? It was truly the kitchen that just kind of blew me away on this one because it's got way more counter space and storage than I ever expected coming. And I think part of it is because of the way that they handled the entertainment system right here. You got that Tootsie Toast and Space Heater right there across from here with just a huge chunk of counter space above it. You see the pop-up power tower right there. You may uh, like to realize that there's some extra outlets under that overhead cabinet as well as over here in what I think is a perfect little appliance station. Now, <laughs> they have that. I don't really know what it's doing for us. I suppose it looks neat. Um, I don't know. What, what would you, To me, that's like a neat little, that's where the kids could put their phones or something at the end of the day. That could be a little phone space or whatever. But remember, I said the entertainment center on this one doesn't necessarily suck. That's because it's on a, a, a very aggressive double-jointed swing arm, so it can pivot around and face a number of different directions for you. So you're not stuck with watching TV just from, you know, the, the table and chairs or the, the floating bench or whatever. You can pivot that around wherever you want. Actually, I haven't tested it, but I think that can actually pivot around enough that you could probably watch TV from the toilet. This might be toilet TV certified, but one of the other thoughts I had is if you're trying to get the kids to settle down at the end of the night... Um, maybe you want to go outside and hang around the fire pit. You could pivot that TV around to face the bunks back there, and I think the kids would have enough of a, uh, a point of view where they could kind of lay down, sit down, settle down, and watch that while you're outside just relaxing, you know, either just sharing stories by the campfire or having a drink or maybe doing a little bit of both. I, I don't know, chewing the fat, shooting the breeze, whatever the case might be for you. You may notice double thick mattresses on these. That's something some of your more premium brands tend to do, but something almost none of them do is give us 600 pound rated double bunks like this. That is a very almost like Jayco exclusive quality at this point. There's very few manufacturers that really match that. Uh, you see the cargo bunk space there, but what's cool about this? The upper and lower bunks each get their own window, or uh, not windows. <laughs> I mean, they do. They get their own windows. The top window goes off the back. The bottom window goes off the side, just for reference. But they have their own curtains. That's what I was trying to say. It's curtains for you, see? Household and USB outlets up there, right by the headboard for the kids. Household and USB outlets up there, where there could be headboard area for the kids. But they also put those plugs up high enough where if you're loading cargo inside and out, you're, you're not taking quite the risk of, like, smashing and bashing those things up. Now, part of me wanted that uh, bathroom door to open the other direction so it didn't overlap with the bunks, but I see why they did it this way. When we get to the slide close road mode in just a minute, you're going to understand why. Porcelain foot flush stool here, and uh, the space around the stool, overall, 
Pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. There was plenty of room to reach around to utilize uh, and employ the butt napkins. And um, really, the way that they've handled the whole bathroom, I like that big corner Lipitorge Galore storage cabinet right there. Backlit morning mirror so that, you know, if it's late at night, early in the morning, you don't get blinded by the light like Manfred Mann. And with this having that vaulted ceiling and the shower head on the inside wall of the camper, it left plenty of headroom in here. Even though this is a conventional six and a half foot sidewall, what it did is it created a, uh, a nice big open space above my head. Uh, it, you know, I'm six foot plus, by the way, where I needed it, when I needed it. And uh, I, I think that that bathroom overall was a, uh, a great success. But look at this, the road mode traveling access and function on this RV is just absolutely stellar. I, I, There's not a single thing you can't access. I think you might be able to fully function this RV when it's uh, closed up. Just make sure you grab that little strap right there and cinch that sucker down because we don't want our floating Franken table bench to jiggle bang around all over the place and smash into say like the uh, that, that nice glass front on the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster right next to it. That would make for uh, a, a bad day on the road. But let me get this bathroom door. Let me get this bathroom door close. There we go. Um, with that rear cargo access door and the fact that this just has like this wide open corridor, you could load, I think like you could load a uh, like a two-seater kayak down this sucker and maybe still have room to get in here and like <laughs> get to stuff. <laughs> Here it is from the kayak's point of view with the cargo door. But this is something else I thought was really cool about this one. There are a lot of Murphy beds that cannot function in transit. So this is not just like uh, you can stop and have a snack and get to the bathroom. This is fully naptastic. If you're going down the road and it's a long trip and you have to stop to rub the sleep out of your eyes, you can use and access every single thing in this RV. This is a, that's an A plus feature right there. And now, speaking of road mode, speaking of traveling, uh, a little pro tip for you. I, I realized as I was actually opening the slide, when you get there, you actually, when you travel, you almost want to pull this curtain away from the wall a little bit. Maybe hang it in the middle of the trailer because it comes right up next to that slide out right there. Um, I noticed when I ran the slide out, even though I had it looped up, it did get pinched between the slide and the wall just a little bit. Now, it's not enough to likely hurt the slide, but... Uh, if you don't realize that's happening and if it's raining, you could be giving water a cloth way to just wick right into the RV and cause a problem. And if you have that pinched in the slide out and don't realize it and you step away from the RV for a while, you may come back with a heck of a puddle on the floor and uh, you're going to be spitting nails and fit to be tied. Ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure. And if you appreciate little tips like that and showing you slide clothes with road mode, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Maybe like our video. It doesn't cost you nothing, but it does help spread the message. Man, I gotta give them credit. Whitehawks have maintained that sleek, smexy spaceship kind of look here ever since they standardized that three-quarter nose cap with the windshield up front. Um, it, it just to me, that's the thing. I would love to see that sitting there in my rear view mirror. Now, what do you think, by the way, about the windshield on a floor plane like this, uh, you know, with, with a Murphy bed? You know, is it is it something you like? Is it something you dislike? Would you use it? How would you use it? I'm, I'm kind of curious. I, I always wonder about stuff like that. And again, every manufacturer comes up with a little bit different way of doing it. They all got a little bit different feature and flair. Ooh, the sunshine looks good on that thing. Now, again, one of the cool things with a Jayco is you are getting uh, a pretty much unmatched warranty. It's, uh, you know, two years uh basically you know tip to tail for the most part plus a three-year structural coverage and that right there is a really good example of the benefits that you do get with the bendy bed style murphy bed you do get maximized storage as a result of the way this is done uh because like a, a one piece up down murphy bed system you're going to lose uh, a good chunk of your pass-through uh cavity um, in the older days, you lost all of it. Thankfully, they've done some changes on that. Now, an interesting thing with Whitehawks, they do 30-pound propane tanks instead of 20s, like a lot of laminated and sick and tin brands. Just means that you've got more time between your uh, tank swaps and refills. And they put about the biggest awning on this thing I think they possibly could. I don't believe they had any more room for more awning space. And I, I love all the coverage that it gives us out here. Notice, too, an extra wide door. So when you are, you know, bringing stuff in or out of the inside or outside kitchen, whichever direction you're headed, or if you got a big armload of groceries or duffel bags, you're loading up the kids stuff or you're pulling out a laundry hamper or whatever, you know, you get the idea. Um, it, it's just nicer that you don't have to like try to slide stuff through sideways. Now, 
under the countertop, there was just a, a dead pocket of space. And this is what I call a why not space. No space gone to waste. Uh, that's nerdism number uh, 37. Actually, nerdism number 37 technically is not an ounce of space gone to waste for those who are uh, keeping score at home, but neither here nor there. So they just did something with it. Now it's an oddly shaped, um, you know, mostly triangular uh, kind of arrangement here. But um, I, you know what I looked at that? I looked at that and said, that would be an awesome little trash can spot. What do you guys think about that? I like having the ability to have a trash can on the outside of an RV. It's a super handy feature. Um, something else that's a little bit newer to the Whitehawk series that hasn't received a lot of talk or documentation is the fact that they are now a, uh, a double Asdell using brand. It started with the J Feather Micro, and I knew as soon as I saw Jacob was starting to use Asdell, it was going to be like a test before they started applying it to other members of their family. And sure as shooting, the, uh, the J Feather and the Whitehawk are all now Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the walls. So it's helping keep some weight down. It's improving uh, a little bit of thermal consistency. It's also a noise dampener, which is nice. Uh, Goodyear Endurance radials down here with uh, 87 mile an hour rating, American made. There is no one else that is matching those qualities right there. And with the wide stance axles, what that is doing for us is it is giving us uh, a, a little bit better ride and handling kind of function on this one. Also, the way that they're doing their, their camp kitchens now with that uh, that J port, which is basically a two inch receiver hitch sitting off the back right here. This I like. I like when all the camp kitchen things are kind of all combined into one, where I got the, uh, the, the factory supply griddle sitting right back here with the fridge. And where they used to have a little pull out grill or something like that, it's now just a storage drawer and it's all galvanized rolled steel. Having a drawer outside for things like your spatulas and whatnot, oh man. That is just, that is so handy. That's a feature that I am glad they have on this thing right here. Once again, excellent awning coverage on this model right there as well. Um, now, uh, rolling around the backside here, we kind of peeked at it earlier or from the inside, but you do have that dead bolting cargo door on the back here, the little bunk cargo space. And I want to stress dead bolting because when it's in sleeping position, if you got your kiddos in here, naturally you want to make sure they're secure and they're safe. So one of the cool things here, we do have ourselves a little deadbolt that you can, uh, let me make sure I got it on camera there. You can flip when you want to, close that sucker down. You know, you got two locks on that door to help keep the kids uh, safe and secure, which is kind of nice. Notice too, they are still putting a ladder on the back of these. There've been a lot of brands that they either had a hard time for a while getting a hold of ladders, or now that ladder shortages are largely resolved, a lot of brands have just simply never resumed adding a ladder to the RV maybe trying to, to save a couple bucks to make the RV uh, seem a little more attractive on the uh, the price point perspective. Whereas Whitehawk, is, it, it's less of a, uh, a price sensitive brand and more of a high feature brand. They're in that, I don't even know if I really consider this an ultralight anymore as it was originally intended. I think it's just become a very sleek, like premium kind of uh, laminated camper. And something that gets uh, some bonus points and A plus marks on this is that single sewer outlet right there. And you might notice how everything is enclosed. It is forced air heated down here. Again, these are zero to 100 degree rated. Um, they've done the testing on that on every single Whitehawk model with the slides open. That's something not every brand necessarily does. Um, they're also using a, uh, a, a, a solid radiant barrier package where it really counts to help keep the sunshine out of this thing so you can enjoy a comfortable summer camp experience too. And very similar to that big North Point giant luxury fifth wheel over there, we've got a plywood roof deck on this with double vaulted trusses. It's using almost the exact same roof truss system as Jayco's North Point and Pinnacle uh, you know, luxury fifth wheels. We are all prepped and ready for roof solar. We've also got a, uh, a Furion air conditioner up here, which is a 14,500 BTU air unit. A little bit different from what you often find out there you know, usually you get a choice between a 13,500 or an upgraded 15, and Jayco basically just pretty much goes with the big air by default on these, so you don't gotta worry about which one you're getting. So there you have it. First look at a brand new floor plan that has taken a long time to finally get here, but I am glad it's finally here. Let me know what you think about this one. Let me know where you think they nailed it. Let me know where you think they failed it. What's your favorite part? And what's the one thing you'd change given the opportunity? I'd love to hear about all that. And again, if you like the fair way we go about this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button, catch us on the next one. Cause I try to do this all day, every day. Uh, if you'd like to see where we have one of these in stock and what we're asking, check the link in the video description for pricing and availability. And short of that, Love to hear from you. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.